Hey, hello everyone. Welcome to this video. Today I'm going to show you in this quick tutorial how to perform a uniaxial test using one single element which is uh, more applicable for identifying material parameters. Since in my last video I referred to that, so some people have asked me if I can show how it can be done. Let's start with it. I will just create a cube first. So let's call it 3D deformable solid extrusion. Then I will create a rectangle. Let's say it's at 0, 0 and then it is at the other vertex is at, vertex is at 1, 1. And then I will extrude also at a distance of 1. Again, I'm making everything in millimeters. So all my units will be in megapascals for strength or stresses. So this is a cube now. Now next thing is to define the property. So again, depending on, I get a lot of questions. People ask very generic question that, okay, I have uh, this kind of problem. What material model should I use? So just telling the process doesn't mean anything. You need to really explain what material it is, what sort of problem you have right now and what physical mechanisms are activated and what data is available. Based on that, I can suggest what material model can be used. So if you really want to ask about any specific material modeling or fracture or damage related help, then it would be helpful if you provide more details in the comments rather than just one line that, okay, how to model this thing. Okay, so coming back to this problem, we need to define material properties for this one element cube for uniaxial case. Again, we are going to do a static analysis. So I'm not, I don't need any density there. I have to define the elastic properties. And for elastic properties, I'm going to define Young's modulus. So let's use something for a steel maybe. So 210 megapascals and Poisson's ratio 0 0.033 or 3 or whatever. Okay, then for plastic part, there are a few options. You can use this plastic option and you can give the experimental yield strength, the plastic part of the stress strain curve. If you want, again, I have videos on the YouTube, so you can have a look at that on my channel. But in reality, what we want is basically we want to use more sort of a model which can have, uh, which can basically take some parameters and we can fit those parameters with this. So you can use deformation plasticity theory, uh, which doesn't require elastic constant even. You just define elastic constants, yield strength, and exponent and yield offset. Again, this is based on ramberg oscott function. So if you again are interested, I can make a video on that, but it's an analytical relationship which covers the linear elastic and then nonlinear plastic part using this function, uh, which is based on Romberg or Scott. So again, this is one way of doing it. Let's go with this option. Some fictitious steel type properties. Let's give a yield strength of this, get an exponent of 1.5 or something. Yield offset, let's give a very smaller value of 0.01. You can go with 0.0 total strain theory and also the uh, plastic strain theory, if you understand what the ASTM and ASM really say, different people classify this yield offset is basically a line which you create parallel to the elastic curve and find out the yield strength actually. So we just give a value of 0.01 right now, which is basically we are offsetting 0.01 from the elastic line. So once we have done that, we need to create a solid section. I'm just going to click on that, select the material one, which we just have. And now we will assign it to this cube. So I have done that. I just move to the assembly. I will bring this part here. And then now I will define a step, create step. I will create a static general step. And then I will say, okay, you need to know if it's a very large deformation, then maybe it's better to have nonlinear geometric option on. Always use a maximum number of increment to very large. If it needs more increments, then it will stop because you will give, if you have given a value of 100 or something. So for so for, for more number of outputs, you can, I'm going with 0.1 and I will keep the maximum number of size of the increment size at 0.1 and then press OK. And now if I go, there is no interaction, it's just one element. So we go to the loading. This is, now you have to, for loading, you have to specify the loading conditions which are equivalent to a uniaxial test. So what we will do, we will fix three faces in that orthogonal direction. As I explained in the previous video, we will keep two surfaces free and we will apply some kind of bounding condition or loading condition on one face. So these free surfaces will ensure that we will have Poisson's effect. So if we are pulling in this direction, uh, we will have contraction in this direction, which is which is this kind of a replication of the unique cell test. So displacement boundary condition, displacement, I'm gonna fix 
this boundary condition in x direction so i will select u1 and then i will select this boundary condition this surface and i will select u3 to be fixed and then i will just rotate it and i will fix the bottom one in the u2 direction so this surface and then it will be fixed in u2 direction now i have put this here but it looks something like this and then if you apply this present boundary condition then you will see that u3 and I will apply displacement of let's say again it depends on the strain so if you know the size of this is one and if your test has gone up to a strain value of 0.1 then then you need to find the displacement which is basically the displacement over the total length so total length is one so it will be in this case the displacement will be the same as the total strain let's say 0.1 in this case and we select ramp option so it will be increased in a linear manner and when we specify this so you see it's in this direction which means it's a compressive test we need to change it to a tension test as well so we just change the direction by changing the sign and now you see it's a tension test so once we have done that we go to the mesh and then we say okay uh, select the part and we select this and then we give the mesh size to be one because the size of the cube is one so now it will only create one element when we mesh it see also you need to make sure that the element is reduced integration so that you only have one integration point so you see in this case it has used a standard 3d stress linear element with reduced integrations okay so the rest of the stuff is really unimportant for this problem because uh, in this case you have very well constrained thing if you have a lot of bending and other types of loading then you need hourglassing and everything else which is again i have discussed in other videos so once we have done that we go to the job and then we create a job we call it let's say uni xdl test and then you can see it's the default option so you can again play around with memory if you want more memory it's a small model you don't need any parallelization and i'm going to go with the full output for precision and now i will submit and if you monitor now so it should show you if there are any issues or not otherwise everything will start so you see everything in profile processing had no warnings or errors it started to run the simulation and now you should see the increments and you should see it finishes in no time so once it's finished finished you just go back and press results and now if you see the contour plot so you will see an extension in this direction contraction in this direction because we kept these two spaces free and we have some stress value now if you want to plot the stresses now what you can do is you can go to the xy data manager create an xy data manager field output and then we will select the stresses you can press again depends what what stress values you are comparing in from the experiment let's say i want to compare the uh, let's go with s33 because we pulled it in 33 direction you can also go with principal stresses as well or measure the stress if you have that from experiments and then logarithmic strain in 33 direction so i will save that rather than plotting it for the time being i need to select the element type so i will select this and now i will save it once i have saved it i can just check if my stresses look what it has to be so you see it has uh, the stresses have been very high and most probably our parameters are not good enough to provide that kind of non-linearity so well let's first uh, see how the stress strain curve looks like so we will go with operate on xy data and then combine option here this this save okay i'm not just not renaming it but you can rename it and then you can have a strain and a stress as the plot as well so once you have that thing you can compare it with the experiment because you can also import the experimental text file or whatever from ascii file or you can also copy paste manually as well from keyboard as well so if you press keyboard then you can you can basically copy paste the data from experiments here directly from an excel sheet or whatever you have and then you can compare directly and you can then ma make it automated as well by creating a macro or writing a python script i'm just showing you manual so i'm going to delete this and I'm going to go back to my material model because we just use some arbitrary properties to bring some non-linearity. So we go here and we used 
this as the Young's modulus, this was as the Poisson's ratio, yield strength was 350 and the exponent is there. So maybe we need to use a very high exponent or something, a very low exponent. I'm not sure. I haven't, I haven't used it for a while now. So let's go with 0.5 and see what happens. Job, submit, and then monitor. So it has to be greater than one. So I made a mistake there. So let's, okay. So let's go to the material model and then modify this property. So let's, I'm, I'm going to use a very, let's say a value of eight or something to see what happens then. And let's use this value as 0.2 or something. Okay, go back, job, submit, monitor. So everything looks to be going well. Finished. Results. And if you plot, then you can see how the deformation looks like. You can again go to create, field output. You already have those variables. So you just go select, press done, and then plot. And you can see now you have a nonlinear extra string curve. So I will save this one now and dismiss. And now I will delete the one which we had on that. And now we can combine. So operate on XY data, combine. First x axis, horizontal axis is basically logarithmic strain, vertical axis is this. So I would save it as data two. And then if I plot, then you see a nice stress strain curve. And then if you have an x, let's say we call this as a, so you see we just change the parameter. So we have two curves. So if I call this as uh, something else, uh, if I want to rename it as experiments, so I can always. So I can always keep this as as experiment and then I can compare every time when I do a simulation with this. So you can see our curve is much lower than this because in that case we use a very small value so it become linear hardening material. So this way then next time you come back you again delete this and next time you come back you create another data and you can plot it and until you match the two curves together. So I hope this made some sense and you are now able to do the uni excel test in abacus we're using one element and try to find out the parameters for any material model which you really want to use so thank you very much if you are have still have some questions or difficulties related to this then please write in con comment below and i will try to reply you back soon thank you very much and bye for now